thermostat. Thermostat. This is the easy part. Getting it to show up on the screen like that, that's the easy part. All I did there was just copied this from the example. I did change this to, this top line because I think this top line's wrong. Problem I think is if you have two IDs that are the same. So this may be a, I don't know for sure. Maybe they did it on purpose. Maybe they did a typo in there. I'm not sure. So what I did, this is my thermostat entry down here. And I added this line at the top. And this line basically just uh, adds a new object, which is a label. And I positioned it five from the five from the side, five down from the top, made it the width of almost the whole width. If you take the five on one side and five on the other side, subtract them from 240, which is the width, then you got 230. So that's the width. The height, I made 25. And then I just put in the text for us. For me, it'll be master bedroom, but this would be the name of your thermostat, whatever you want to name it. And then I just told it to line up in the center. And that gives you that up there where it says master bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> the hard part of the thermostat is not the visual part that shows up on the screen. That's pretty easy and it's already laid out and somebody did it for us and I'm not going to change it. Well, I'll change a little bit of it, but we'll get to some of the things that I'll change because some of the things aren't going to apply to me and I don't know how much they'll apply to everybody else, but it is pretty slick. Like watch that display up there. If when I swipe sideways, look at that. It like gives you different options. I do like, they did do a really good job on this of making it. So it's very responsive. Like that thing moves around a lot. You can see it there and then you can move it over there. Of course it's in Celsius, but that's okay. Cause we, that's what we should do is have our houses in Celsius. So we've got the display part is easy. The hard part is the configuration part in Home Assistant. This is the text you need, or this is the, this is the code stuff that you need to make the display look like the one you're looking at on my screen. But from there, we got a little more trouble. This, starting here, is the object information that you need for Home Assistant, and it is mucho grande. Mucho, mucho, mucho. Look at that, 200 and something lines. Yowza, ouch. But that's okay. We are gonna, we're gonna make it work. We're gonna figure it out. We're gonna work, we're gonna figure it out. But I'm going to start with just cutting it and pasting it into my file in Home Assistente. All right, we're gonna go into the studio code here uh, and we're gonna go into open hasp. So I have this open hasp.yaml and this has every open hasp device. I guess you could you could probably have a different file for each one. Right now I've got the three or four of them that I've messed with all kind of jumbled into one file. So I'm going to just tag this on the end of the, of all that. So I'm going to go to this example from this, from the open hasp documentation. And I'm just going to start here and I'm going to grab this whole thing. And then we'll have to go back through and figure out what stuff we need to change. And it's going to be a lot. This is home assistant open hasp.yaml and we're going to paste it. It didn't line up correctly. Uh, it, it's one off. So I got to grab it all. Hope this works. Grab everything here. And I'm going to have to move it left one tab. Yes. <laughs> Shift tab. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good, good, good. So this is all being added to my Lanbon and object. So this is my primary heading, right? It says Lanbon 1. That's the name of this thing and then objects. Okay, so Lanbon one, objects, and then all these objects, these are all the buttons or the interactive things or the display elements. Okay, each one is an object. So I just added a whole bunch of objects. The example is using page three, but mine is actually page four and my media player is page three. So you can't have duplicates like this. Object P3B20 being the volume slider on my media player, that's a problem if object P3B20 is also listed as my arc slider on the thermostat. That will no worky. So this is going to be, I know I'm going to do it the slow and difficult way because that's just what I like to do. I'm going to go in here and do four. And then I'll leave the rest of the numbers the same. 
So it can still be button 20, it just has to be referencing page four. So now it's P4, B20, and on down the list. So that's part of what I have to change to make this work for mine. And if you wanted more than one thermostat page, you do the same thing, but you change it all. It would probably be a good idea to break this up. This is gonna start to be a bit unwieldy as far as a size of this YAML file. It's gonna be mucho grande. So we might want to think of ways to split it up. I think as long as we put it in that folder and we name it, it probably worked. Control H and replace P3 to P4. But I don't wanna replace all the other ones because I've, unfortunately I've got P3B something up, up above that's right and I want it to stay. So I only wanna do it from like this point down, which I could probably do but I could also probably do this. So that was the first thing we need to change. The first thing was to change it so that the page button is correct based on my setup. For me, the thermostat is page four. I had to change all those page threes to page fours. The next thing I have to do is change all these climate thermostat ones to something else. Now this is when I can do like what you're talking about and do like a control find and then replace, right? So I can do that here. So I am going to pick climate thermostat underline one, and I'm going to change all occurrences. Ooh, I can change it all at once. So let's go into Home Assistant and figure out which thermostat we want this to modify. So let's go here into our developer tools and we will pick a thermostat. I'm gonna do it with the master for now. We're just gonna say climate master floor heat master underscore floor underscore heat. So now the way that I did that change all occurrences, it's gonna let me change them all at once. Climate dot master underscore floor underscore heat. But now those are all changed. That might get us started. So master floor heat set temperature, like that might get us started. Another thing that's gonna mess us up here is this. Okay, the sensor, here we go. Gauge current temperature. This is another one we need to change. So we gotta change this. So this is his BLE something something sensor. And I need to change that to my sensor. So let's go figure out which sensor that's gonna be. Here, master bedroom temperature. So let's look at what this thing is. It is flipping cold in there. This is what I need. So that's a roundabout crazy way to get there, but it's got a roundy, it's got a crazy name. This is one of those Zigbee temperature sensors. So it's got a funky name, Lumi Lumi weather, blah, 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 temperature. We're gonna copy that. And we're gonna go back here and we're gonna just, we'll take, we'll do this and we'll do that all, change all occurrences. Can I do that and then paste? Oh yeah, I could. I did it with my little button on my, on my mouse. Great. So I just pasted in my sensor name instead of their sensor name. I, I'm, I'm anticipating that there's also going to be a problem when we get to, so we have some, we have a climate, for me, I have a climate entity that does the heat and a different climate entity that does the air conditioning. So I'll have to, somewhere in here, I'll have to modify those. Like this one, fan modes. Fan modes, that climate is gonna be different. Let's start with this and then we'll, We'll, we'll get it going and then we'll go back into it and we'll and we'll start finding all the places where we need to change it. Woof, woof, woof. It would be, this is why we need blueprint, right? We need, and I'm not good enough at blueprints yet to make this into a blueprint, but that's what we need here is we need a blueprint and we need it to say, okay, well, what entity do you uh, want to control? Which climate entity do you want to control for heat? Which one do you want to control for, for cooling? Which one do you want to control for fan? And then um, where what's what's the entity for your temperature sensor, right? And then it puts all these in here. So, but can we do blueprints? Blueprints are for automations. This is not an automation. Let's check it out. So we did this. We did this in Home Assistant. So now it's time to go into Home Assistant and to restart. Right? Oh, did I save it? I don't think I saved it. Let's go back here and save this. Control S. Okay, now that's saved. So like here's one, set fan mode and target ID, master floor heat. So there's gonna be some issues, but I do have some of these things. So we'll go in and we'll change each one, but I wanna see it kind of get started first, right? So now that we've got that, now we can restart this. And we'll see if it says, hey, you're, 
your uh, device is screwed up. So when you wanna back this up, so you made all these changes and it's really important you wanna keep them, you don't want them to get lost like, like happened to me with my other board. You can go over to the pages.json.l, right click and then download. And then just keep it in a place that's important to you. We should be back to back in business here. Oh boy. <laughs> you guys looking up there? That ain't right. 